so yeah so uh, one way to um, uh, identify uh, influential points is using outliers as well as you know using residuals uh, as well as uh, leverage so using a combination of these we can identify influential uh, as well as outlier points okay so our our target is usually to remove uh, influential points because outliers do not affect your regression line influential okay. points do but then again there is a caveat to it you cannot remove influential points blindly you have to understand why these points are uh, coming the way they are okay so it might so happen that there are valid reasons for the influential points to be in the data okay say for example if you were trying to predict uh, income based out of age then you will have people who are out of you know ivy league colleges who earn a lot more than the average guys right so these people although outliers and influential points you cannot blindly remove them because they they are also a phenomena within your population but if an outlier is coming due to a reason like you know somebody being overweight or there is a error in recording the data if you can justify it that way then you can remove the outlier Okay. Okay. So we will, uh, uh, you know, study the outliers and how uh, to calculate them. Because I intentionally uh, have not given you here uh, measures of outliers because uh, then it you will be uh, forgetting it because these are like formulas that you have to uh, you might not have to remember but you need to uh, be able to apply them. So what I will do is. as and when we come up to speed in python and we build regression lines i then i'll show you uh, codes or you know parameters that will let you know how to identify influential and uh, outlier data points okay. so right now you just have to understand the concept because the okay. formula is not important um um so we uh, so we had assumed uh, all these assumptions during uh, uh building while building our regression line right so uh, we assume normality so so i will like i said i will i will not go into the calculation of this i just you just take a note of this and we will be generating all these outputs when we build the regression line so uh we te- we will be testing the normality of residuals uh as, as well as test for uh, testing for heteroscedasticity uh so for that we'll be using uh, the kernel density plots and uh, qq plot or quantile quantile plots so here uh, what we do is we compare the uh, are you familiar with qq plots yeah then i'll not explain you are right so okay so we will we can uh, do a qq plotting or a kernel density plot and you can also uh, use the uh, shapiro test uh, to yeah i request yeah. one thing i mean if you can just you know make me help me out and just remind me just by like giving a little one line definition one line or definition about qq plot so that i'll recall it hello hello hello
Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I think I. You can hear me now. Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. I think I got offline for a second. Okay. So um, yeah. we wanted to understand quantile uh, QQ plot, right? Just to just to read one line. So, uh, I'll call it. Right. So. Uh, what it does is so you plot your uh, you know quantiles whatever value so you calculate uh, quantiles you know what quantiles are you divide your data into 100 yeah. parts and you calculate the value right exactly so you calculate the, your your quantiles uh, and then you compare your quantiles with whatever the quantiles would have been if it was normal okay so it, it's it's basically a, a plot wherein the normal normal distribution quantiles are a straight line, and then you plot your own quantiles and you see if it how far apart is it from a straight line. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, you can you can do the QQ plot. Then uh, you can uh, also do a statistical test, which uh, uh, will tell you whether a distribution uh, is uh, normal or not. Then you can also do a scatter plot of residuals versus predicted. Uh, so we will look at how that looks in the next slide. And for heteroscedasticity, you can also do a white test. Yeah. You were saying anything? So we will come come to all of this when we uh, when we apply. So if, if you are uh, if have have any questions, I guess it will be cleared when we actually calculate it. Okay. Uh, next, we our assumption was the variables should not be related to each other. So that that is what we call as multicollinearity. So for that, we look at something known as uh, very inflation factor uh, or VIF and uh, tolerance which is reciprocal of uh, VIF okay uh, next we uh, look at uh, testing nonlinearity so that you can test by uh, plotting the dependent versus uh, independent and if it's not in a linear uh, kind of an arrangement then you can directly tell that it's it's a nonlinear kind of relation the final thing that we need to test is whether there is a um, autocorrelation. By autocorrelation, I mean whether two data points on the same variable are correlated to each other or not. So this happens when uh, you are uh, observing a particular uh, phenomena or a particular uh, person over time. So that is when. So this is usually observed in time series data, and we can test this using Darwin Watson test. So all these, okay. uh, again, like uh, I'll reiterate that this will get back and we, you will be able to calculate all of this. Okay. Now these are few examples of how you can, uh, you know, know whether a distribution is non-linear or linear. So clearly if you see anything uh, which follows a linear pattern uh, for uh, within the residuals, then you know that your linearity assumption is valid. Okay. 
again to test for heteroscedasticity you can also use the scatter plot of residuals uh, so this although these are not very conclusive tests because usually when you apply it on a real world problem things will not be you know so drastically different so there will it will always be in that gray area where you are confused whether to call it a linear or a non linear or whether to conclude as a homoscedastic or heteroscedastic so anyway you have to uh, rely a lot upon statistical tests rather than uh, scatter plots but these are like good to do things okay okay now this is again a uh, sort of a uh, scatter plot wherein it shows uh, that there exists autocorrelation uh, for example if you see this case here you see that there is a clear distinct pattern between sorry say that there is a clear distinct pattern between <coughs> observation at any point with that that of the previous point so it, it is a clear pattern right so in these these cases are really detrimental for any kind of regression so uh, one has, has to you know remove these variables or do a transformation to stabilize these variables okay. right so this is again uh, so this basically tells you the difference between uh, using a single uh, pretty single dependent variable and it, uh, using a multiple dependent variables so when you use a single dependent variable to predict an outcome your regression is usually a line right but when you have multiple predictors suppose you have two predictors then by building the regression line what you are doing is you are basically trying to draw a plane so it's although okay. we call it a regression line but it's it's when you use two or more variables it's not usually a line it's a plane which is the plane that you use to segregate between or to predict the value of a particular uh, y variable okay um this is again uh, that uh, 3d view wherein you are basically trying to uh, find out the value of a y variable using a plane uh, other than using a line so any any questions so far no nothing else nothing right so uh before uh, we uh, you know uh, move into uh, or before we conclude the uh, uh, regression session so one point that one has to remember always while building regression line or specifically building you know multiple regression line is how to avoid overfitting so in the last class we discussed that uh you can increase the accuracy of a model by either you know changing the technique that you are using or by incorporating more data points right so although it's always good to increase the accuracy but one has to realize that when you increase the accuracy by uh, that you usually mean increasing the accuracy on your training data so or the data on which you are building the model but that data is usually a subset of the whole population or that data is usually a subset of all possible combinations of data points that are there outside in the world right so one has to draw a very fine line between uh, you know increasing or tweak the accuracy or tweaking the model and to maintain a, a you know a decent consistent accuracy even on uh, data which uh, apart from the training data so if you tweak your model or if you you know train your model or over train your model what will happen is the model will predict very well on the training data but it will 
you know the accuracy will fall drastically when you try to predict something which was not in your training data so it is very important for ones to uh, you know test his or her model after building it before each and every iteration so that is why when you build a model you need to segregate your model into training testing and validate validation data so when you build a version of the model and you are you are okay with a decent kind of accuracy before moving or before concluding this model as final you have to test that model on your, on data sets which are different from your development data so this will help you in you know avoiding problems of overfitting so this is again an example of uh, building the model although this is for a saas example uh, so but the problem remains the same so i i highlight what the problem is so here you see that hello 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 yeah, yeah you can hear me right yeah i can hear you can you please go back once to the earlier slide okay this one this one yeah and the next slide to this is because i mean you swapped into lot of slides i got confused okay okay so this is this is where i wanted to uh, you know show you an example although this is out of saas but uh, but the problem is basically same so what this shows you is when you you have built a model okay and then when you uh, put it if the model is too good uh, then if you uh, put it in a data which is apart from your development data so then yeah. the model becomes uh, it, the performance is not consistent so this is where where i wanted to uh, reach so what happens is see this is your r square right yeah and this is your uh, you know samples that percentage of samples you have taken so you see that yeah. as you increase the number of uh, predictors you know mm -hmm. then what happens is the r square values uh, drop drastically uh, when when you uh, uh, when you use a large portion of the sample by that what i mean is say you have in total 1000 yeah hello 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 yeah i can hear you yeah yeah so what i'm saying is what happens is when you have a lot of variables or a lot of predictors uh, yeah. but then you need to have a lot of data points as well otherwise okay. the model will overfit itself because if say for example the ideal case is if you have 10 observations to build your model and if you use 10 variables then the model will trap will predict 100% accurately right because you have used the same number of predictors as there are observations but your model will be predicting inaccurately when you move out of your development data because your model has overfit your data so that's why it is very important to may have a lot of rows when you use a large number of predictors so the ratio of number of predictors to number of observations should remain very small you you want me to explain again no i got it any any questions nothing as such oh 
Okay. Cool. Uh, so this basically brings us to the uh, you know end of regression. Although uh, we did cover the theoretical aspects, but we will go into each and every application uh, once we are up to speed in Python. So right now we will go into Python. So as I uh, remember in the last class, I had requested you to download Python. Did you download Python? No, I guess I didn't. Just give me a minute, I'll do that. Okay. Sure. Or what you can do is you can uh, follow the class for now because I will anyway be circulating the materials. So what you can do is you can ping me your email ID. Okay, in the last class actually uh, towards the end I forgot to ask. You guys can ping me your email ID so that I can circulate the codes as well as the course materials and everything. I have to download 3.6 now, Python. No, you download 2.x, 2. 2. whatever version is available because for three point, a number of packages they are not yet supporting the three point. Oh, so download two point seven, two point eight, something like that. It's two point seven point one three. Right. So that's the latest one. Oh, okay. I have one more question. The package yeah. name is TensorFlow. Right. Does not um, support. So yeah. Does not support three point six or the package itself is having some issue. Um. So I, as far as I know, TensorFlow should work on two point seven because I have not yet migrated to three, so I won't be able to comment on three. So it's safe to use two point X version because all the packages are supported for that version. Because uh, I guess I, uh, yeah, I'll tell you since as it is getting downloaded, uh, I need your help, bit help in my project which I'm doing. The mm -hmm. one I told you of the young cancer team right. with image pro. Right. So right. I have covered up till segmentation part of it. Now I have to work on the modeling part. So for that, okay. when I went through a lot of research papers and all, which other people have done, I got to know that I need the TensorFlow, but TensorFlow okay. is something that even if I am like I um, how I did activated the TensorFlow was I simply load the on the Anaconda prompt as activate TensorFlow, then I okay. installed it with the pip install and then the path and then the wheel 3.34 bit 32 bit to 64 bit CPU version I downloaded okay. that and then I gave the command. Okay. But so then it, again, it was, yeah. it got so what installed. Was there? No, okay. it got installed. But when I tried to just get hello word as an output by TensorFlow mm -hmm. command, I could not get it. It gave me an error that TensorFlow is not supported and all. Okay, and you are using Python what? Three point? Three point six. So can you try that in two point seven? Since you are downloading in two point seven. Just try and see if the same thing works in 2.7. Okay, but then again, I'll have to write the complete. I'll have to write the complete code in 2.7, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But have and you did you save the code? Did you, did you did you save the code? I mean, you have to install it. But did you whatever yeah. code you wrote? Did you save the code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then it should run on 2.7 as well. Okay, so I'll do one thing. Uh, I'll do that after 7 as I'll reach to my place at 7 as I have one more class after this. Uh, mm -hmm. So in case I face any issue, then today or tomorrow, I mean before 10 or after 7, can I get a bit of your time? I mean I have team viewers so I can get the access through TVR and Skype along with you. So when, 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 uh, what is the timing? I mean uh, when do you want to reach out? I mean when you are free, tomorrow or today. Um, today will be difficult. Uh, okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, okay, tomorrow. Or can can we do it day after? Because tomorrow also after the class it will be difficult. So, uh, 
if we want to do if you can do it on monday night i will be fine all right monday night at what time say around uh, 8:39 839 perfect i'll be back till then from office also not an issue okay okay i have downloaded the python i have to download anaconda also right no we, for now we will be using uh, the use the default idle compiler i have downloaded python what yeah. next you want to do Okay, so now you can you can you can follow or you can replicate whatever I am doing as I go through the basics of Python. Okay, so where do I write it? I mean, you want me to open the Jupyter notebook directly okay. from Python? Okay. So, oh, what I you can do is in the start uh, line, in the start command line, you can write I D L E. One second, let me open Python. So it's a it's a Windows Windows system, right? Yeah, yeah, Windows system. Uh, which one I have to open in Python? Python manuals, Python command line. I D L E. No, no, no. So I have to open which thing of Python? Python manuals or Python command line or idle Python GUI? Idle, idle Python GUI. One second. Okay, I opened it. I can see the Python two point seven point one three shell. Right, right. So we okay. for now we'll be using this uh, shell, okay? Oh, okay. Because basic basic stuff you can do it. So okay. anaconda and all that is nothing but you know an add-on over this in order to make coding easy. Uh, other okay. than that, everything is same. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so I'll just start off with this. Second. Just let me know if you can see my screen. Okay. I can see. Okay. So, I know you you might be knowing most of this. So yeah. I'll try to uh, browse over this. Uh, take a lot less time than usual. Okay. No, actually, I know this, but I don't know the proper concepts because I have just read it through net and all. So I would like okay. to go by starting in deep. Okay. 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 Cool. If you can just zoom, I zoom in your screen bit because I cannot see it exactly. It's very small that shell screen. Is it one second? Let me see if I can zoom in. Can you see it now? Yeah, I have. Okay. So, uh, I'll just, today, uh, my plan is to just, uh, you know, go over the basic building blocks of Python. And okay. uh, using this, you can then uh, build on and use statistical uh, command over this. So okay. Python, like any other language, uh, can be used as a calculator, right? But there is okay. a peculiar feature in 2.7, which was, which has been, I heard it was sorted in uh, version 3. But I'll show you what the feature is. So here, if you type 3 plus 3, mm -hmm. it gives 6, okay? Okay. And if you divide divide ten by two, it gives you five. Okay. But if you divide ten by three, it gives three. All right. So, it doesn't give the decimal places. It just gives the whole numbers. Exactly. So what you have to do to get decimal places is you have to write ten point zero and divide it by three or 10 divided by 3.0 so you have to use one your float which this is called float uh, type of data in order to get the output in float okay so this point zero thing which we are giving in the starting command is, is known as float no this data type is known as float you know whatever we I call mean, usually as decimal so okay. this type of data which has decimal points is called float in in python there are 
two types of numbers one is integer and another is float okay okay so i so you can use it as a uh, calculator but um, what i wanted to show is the all the different signs that you can have in python so you can obviously add uh, subtract multiply and you can use the modulo uh, sign as well uh, you know modulo right it yeah. basically gives you the reminder so yeah. it you, you can use it for uh, getting the reminders and then you can uh, all the exponents are usually double asterisks and uh, all the uh, you know uh, flow yeah what is double asterisk this is exponents uh, so for example if you want to calculate 2 to the power 10 you have to write 2 to asterisk and delta okay okay got it then uh, for example if you uh, want to write, uh, have a floor division i by floor uh, i mean that you uh, round down the uh, value so 84 divided by 5 will give you 16 because what you do is you round down the value to the lower integer okay so it should be 16 point something right so other than instead yeah. of that it gives you 16 so you can use these okay. kind of signs and accordingly as per your requirement okay okay Got it. sure uh, then what you, there are also you know functions like which are built-in functions say for example you want to uh, no convert a particular number into binary okay what you will write is bin1024 and then you press enter so this gives you uh, the binary description of that and if you want to write hexa hexadecimal kind of uh, numbers then you do the same thing here hex1024 and then enter So although these these functions will be uh, not used exhaustively, but you know it's it's like good to know things. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, exactly. So what I'm doing here is I'll I'll share with you a sort of PDF which has all these functions written within it. I am just picking okay. and choosing few examples so that you know what are the broad types of functions. Okay. So another I have thing just you can share my mail ID with you. I guess you got it. One second. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so these are like basic functions available. Apart from that, you can do the usual uh, things that you can do with the calculator, right? So you can write expressions within it. Like, for example, if you want to add ten plus 2 and then multiply it by 3 so you can write it in this way okay so these I mean, it also follows the same word mass rule right 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 so once you are you uh, so here till now we have almost covered uh, you know different operations you can do with calculators now start we can start with the next step which is like storing values within a variable so for example if you want to store a value in a variable if you want to store a value 10 in b you have to write b equal to 10 okay okay and then you can write a equal to 5 now if you want to add a and b and then store it in c you write c equal to a plus b and that stores in c and in order to display it you need to write print Okay. It's like, I mean, with the basics which we use in the C language. Right, right. It's very similar to C language. So, this, these are like basic expressions that you can use. Okay. Apart from that, on these variables, since you have stored the numbers, you can also use conditional operators. 
So I will share again, show a slide of conditional apparatus. So these are like and, uh, if, else, if, you know, greater than, less than, equal to. Okay. The basic looping commands. Yes. Not looping. These are like conditional. Say, for example, you want to ask if A is greater than B. Yeah, these are conditional commands. Yes. Equal to is done in this way. A double equal to B. Okay. Okay. Other than that, everything else is same. One sec. You have written A is greater than B. Right. Uh, yes. So, and the output so it, came as false. While we did not assign any value for A, any value for B, then how did... Okay. Okay. okay, yes, okay. Yes. Sorry. 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 Okay. 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 So, these are like uh, expressions which you can use to compare between different values of the variables. So these are like okay. usual building blocks uh, to any kind of codes. Then what you can do is you can also use mathematical functions like square root. So for that what you have to do is you have to import uh, uh, from a package called math. So to import from any package in general what you can do is you have to write in this way. So this will import everything from math, okay? But you can specifically also import particular things. So I have imported all the uh, modules and functions that are present in the math uh, module, and square root is one of them. You have written from space math space import. After that, you have again given space and then asterisk. Yes. Okay. Okay. But then what's the so difference these, when yeah. we uh, write, import a package like this and when we write the package like uh, pip install or conda install? When we do that on Anaconda, then we use it. See, so when there are, there are two steps to use any package. One is okay. to install it from web. So for okay. that you use something like pip install. So what okay. that will do is that will download the whole package and install it in your system. But the okay. second step is to include it in your code. Because a okay. package is nothing but a huge set of code, right? So yeah. you, you might have downloaded in your computer 100 packages, but you don't want to include all those 100 packages as part of your code. You only want to include whatever you require. So for okay. that, you have after you have installed it, you need to import from your uh, you know, from your memory in the computer yeah, by yeah, using yeah. import and then attached okay. it in your existing code. So that's the difference okay. between pip install and import. Got it. Okay. 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 So now if you uh, will go into some, so the math module has also has uh, the values of, you know, constants like pi. So for example, if you are trying to calculate the say, area of a uh, circle so you mention the radius as file and then you mention area is equal to pi into radius square So this okay. this can you know display display the radius. So in a similar but, way, P I yeah. and P Y. What's the difference between P I and P Y? Uh, I have not seen P Y. P I is the pi uh, mathematical. I don't know what P Y is. Where I have you know. encountered P Y? Actually, we what we do we just when we are writing the command we write it as import numpy import dicom. So there is a package called as numpy and pi. Numpy and pi pi, right? Yeah. Okay. So pi pi is uh, a name of a uh, module or a package. 
So okay. that has and nothing to do with this mathematical pi pi is, you know, the two, uh, two um, uh, the mathematical expression, Function. which is three point one four twenty two by seven. Got it. Got it. Got it. 